Good morning. Welcome again to our daily devotionals here in Greenwell Street Presbyterian Church. As we commence, let us bow together in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we turn to you at the start of this another new day, we thank you, Father, for all the blessings we have known even over these past hours, the rest and refreshment of sleep, the protection and shelter from the wintry weather, already enjoyed food, a cup of tea, things, Lord, that we take so much for granted. We recognise that your good hand is in them all, for every good and perfect gift comes down from above. May we then be thankful in all our lives for all the good things you give us and bless us with. And above all, may we be thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we know life which is eternal. Come now and by the grace of your Holy Spirit, speak into each of our lives as we listen again to your word and give us understanding that we might not only be hearers of this word, but that we might act upon it as well. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our readings in the Gospel according to Mark. We're in chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 27. This is the Word of God. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. We come to what is perhaps the most important question that is posed in the whole of Scripture. Jesus has been with his disciples for some time. He is hopeful that they are learning a bit more about who he truly is. And we have seen over the past number of weeks that that would be something they were learning as they witnessed what he did in addition to what he taught. He's with them and he asks a question. Who do the people say I am? To which he gets several different answers. John the Baptist, Elijah one of the prophets. Of course, Herod, who would ultimately have his head taken off, was the one who believed that Jesus was John the Baptist come back from the dead. In fact, he was fearful of that because he had been the one responsible, of course, for beheading John the Baptist in the first place. Others, that he was Elijah. But why would they think that? Because Elijah was one of the great prophets of old through whom God did many mighty and wonderful works. Or perhaps one of the prophets. Well, you recall how often the people would say that he spoke not like others did. There was something quite unique, quite powerful, uh, something quite uh, engaging about his speech, about how he spoke and about what he spoke about. So there was those questions. And of course, today we have people and they all have their own thoughts and ideas of who Jesus is. If you were to go into the street and ask people, who do you think Jesus is? You would be, I suspect, shocked by the lack of knowledge of true who truly is. I suspect one of the answers that would be up there amongst uh, the most frequent one would be, well, he was, he was a good man who helped people. And that's about as far as people perceive him. Or he was a good man who died to show us how much God loves us or something to that effect. And of course, it may be that you're listening in this morning. And if you were asked, who do you say that I am? You might well come up with one of those sorts of answers. Well, how can we know whether the answer you give is right or not? Well, we can know because Jesus himself te te teaches us. He doesn't leave us with our own ideas or our own thoughts. Because you know what? Our own ideas and our own thoughts count for absolutely nothing in the sight of God. What matters to God is that we believe what he himself teaches and it doesn't matter what we think. And so what is it that we are taught? Well, Jesus then turns to his own disciples. This is what the other people think about me. 
Who do you say I am? This immediately takes up, brings us to one of the most important principles within the Christian faith itself, and it is this, that the Christian faith is always a personal response. It's always a personal response. Who do you say I am? Now the you there is corporate. He's of course speaking uh, to all the disciples. What about you? Who do you say I am? But of course it wasn't just all the disciples, but each of the disciples, and that is epitomized for us in the one who does speak up and who other than the one who nearly always spoke up, and that was Peter. Peter said, you are the Christ. Matthew would go on to say the son of the living God. Well, what did Peter mean when he said you are the Christ? How would a Jew in the first century have understood that term, you are the Messiah? Well, he would have understood it as you are the promised one, the one promised of old, the one promised to come in the line of David, the one promised to come to bring light to darkness, to bring sight to blind, to raise the dead, the one come to establish his kingdom after the throne of David, the one come to reign and to rule and to put down all his enemies. That's how he would have understood him. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. He would have recognised that there's something quite unique about Christ. He's not just another teacher. He's not just another prophet. He is quite unique in who he is. Jesus tells them not to say anything about who he is at present and that was of course because he needed to elaborate on the disciples understanding and we'll see that in our next Bible reading. But the people would automatically, as they did sadly sometime later, acclaim him as a great revolutionary, a great leader of a revolution against the Romans and that is most certainly what he was not. He was the Christ, the son of the living God. He is the one who would eventually offer himself upon the cross. He would eventually die in the place of sinners like you and I. And he would do so out of love for his people. Well, the question that I pose to you this morning is that very same and simple one. Who do you say Jesus is? Why do I ask that question? Why do I suggest it's the most important question? Because on your answer to this question rests your entire eternal destiny. Your entire eternal well-being rests on how you answer this question. If you think of Jesus just as a good worker, just as a kind and generous man, if you only think of him the way the vast majority of the world think of him, then he serves you no useful purpose whatsoever. However, if you know him as the Christ, then you have eternal blessings flow from him. I want to close with a hymn. John Newton, you'll be familiar with the name, the writer of some wonderful hymns that we do often sing, the best of which, best known of which is Amazing Grace. But he wrote a hymn called what think you of Christ? Let me read it. What think you of Christ is the test to try both your state and your scheme. You cannot be right in the rest unless you think rightly of him. As Jesus appears in your view, as he is beloved or not, so God is disposed toward you and mercy or wrath is your lot. Some take him a creature to be, a man or an angel at most. Sure, these have not feelings like me, nor know themselves wretched and lost. So guilty, so helpless am I, I durst not confide in his blood, nor on his protection rely, unless I were sure he is God. Some call him a saviour in word, but mix their own words with their plan. And hope he his help will afford when they have done all that they can. If sayings prove rather too light, a little they own they may feel. They purpose to make up full weight by casting his name in the scale. 
Some style him the pearl of great price, and say he's the fountain of joys. Yet feed upon folly and vice, and cleave to the world and its toys. Like Judas, the saviour they kiss, and while they salute him, betray. Ah, what will professions like this avail in his terrible day? If asked what of Jesus I think, although my best thoughts are but poor, I say he's my meat and my drink, my life and my strength and my store, my shepherd, my husband, my friend, my saviour from sin and from thrall, my hope from beginning to end, my portion, my Lord, my all. What think ye of Christ? That's the test that you are faced with this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we are not left to conjure up out of our own imaginings who Christ is or what he is like. For you have given us in the revelation of Scripture a clear record of who he is. We see it in what is told us of him, his birth, miraculous, his ministry, marked by miracles, his death, atoning, his resurrection, glorious. Here is no mere human being. Here is the very Son of God made man for us and for our salvation. Lord, if perhaps we have thought less of Christ than we ought, I pray that this morning, as we listen to your word, as the challenge of that question comes to us, it may be that there will be the dawning upon the minds of many who Christ truly is, that they will see their only hope for time and for eternity is to be found in him, and that they will come and responding to his invitation, may receive him as their Saviour and as their Lord, and pass over from death to know that life which is eternal. Father, be with us through this day, all that we face, the challenges we have, perhaps the opportunities that will be presented to us to speak a word in season, to do an act of kindness, toward another. Father, we continue to pray for our nation, for our province, for our community. Conscious as we are of the situation in which we find ourselves, perhaps at the most desperate point of our circumstances in these last nine months, we cry out to you, we who feel otherwise helpless to do anything else, and ask, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Visit us in the power of your Spirit. Turn hearts and minds and thoughts toward the Lord Jesus. And grant that there may be such a transformation of our society that it will be evident that our God is at work in our midst and that to the glory and praise of his own and wonderful name. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.